know, a lot of people are looking for healing from an election that oozed divisiveness and anger and hostility from all sides. Add in the crisis in Syria, Brexit, terrorist threats around the world, and hope is hard to find. So can you find it through your faith? We're going to talk to a few people who are hoping to get through to you. Ken and Phil Ashey, CEO of American Anglican Council, uh, Pastor Kimberly Jones, Pothier? Yes. All righty. <laughs> senior Pastor, Church of the uh, Harvest, and Raphael Warnock, Senior Pastor at Ebenezer Baptist Church. Good morning. Good and thank morning. you all so, so much for being to be here. here. We're so honored to have you. Yes. And being that it's Christmas, we're wondering, uh, and Reverend, let me start with you, what is your message going to be this Christmas Day to your congregation? Well, I'm always excited when Christmas comes around, and I think that the message uh, is as powerful as ever. I think it helps us most when we're honest about the larger context of Christmas. It is a message of, of hope mm -hmm. and healing, of love and light, uh, but the message of Christmas is not that we are in denial about the darkness. It's that the light penetrates the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always excited when this time comes around because it gives us a chance to recommit uh, ourselves to the work and the message of Christmas, which is a message of peace. Uh, a message of, of justice, a message of love. Mm -hmm. Kim, what are you finding people need to hear most? What do they say to you that kind of resonates with you and makes you say, okay, let's address this? Yeah, they say that they just want to give up. I hear that a lot. I just feel like giving up. And my question to them always is, what does that look like? Giving up's not even an option. As long as you've got a pulse, God still has a plan. And so, man, you woke up this morning, which means that your best days are ahead. Ephesians 3.20 says he's going to do exceedingly abundantly more than we could ever ask or think. So from here, it's, it's up. It's up. So stop looking in that rearview mirror. Look, at, look forward. Look at that big old windshield ahead of you and realize that God woke you up on purpose. Wow. Now, where are we going? Where are we going? <laughs> One foot in front of the other. Come on. Isn't that the truth? Yes. One foot in front of the other, yes. yes. Anna, what about you? What are you finding that the people in your congregation are saying to you and what did they need to hear most, especially after the last, say, 18 months that we've seen here in this country? Oh, I think there's just a tremendous amount of anxiety, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes fear, um, worry about the future. And, uh, you know, I think the message of Christmas, it's all about Jesus. Yes. He is the one, Luke says, who is the sign for all of us. He's the the baby who's in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes and the and the message of Christmas is, what child is this? Amen. What do you say about this child? What do you say about God who, uh, you know, a God who loves us so much that he enters into our own lives, our flesh and blood, uh, takes it upon himself and says, I've come this close to you so that all you have to deal with now is the habits, hurts, and hang-ups, and I'm here to love come you on. out of those yes. and into abundant life. Mm. But Reverend, how, is, how hard is it for people who have no hope, who are yeah. feeling that anxiety that mm -hmm. you're talking yeah. about, to make that baby, as he's talking about baby Jesus, to make that baby real for them. Well, that's, because we know the story. That's right? right. Well, that's the power of the story, is that Jesus enters into turmoil. So we're not in denial about how difficult it really is. It was difficult that first Christmas. <laughs> I mean, we, we talk about silent night. I mean, it was a holy night. I'm not convinced at all it was a silent night. Uh, <laughs> yeah. we, we, we all know we, babies are rarely silent. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Well, we're talking about the massacre of infants. Yeah. Yeah. Herod is yeah. on the loose, even though hope is in the air. And the holy family becomes a, a refugee family, yeah. uh, seeking asylum in Egypt from the abuses uh, of a despot who is insecure. So you see this fear and hope and tension in the story. And so what we're encouraged to do is to embrace our hope and resist the fear and really embrace the message of the angels who said, peace on earth, goodwill toward all. I submit that the reason why we're still struggling to have peace on earth is because we, we have a hard time with all. Yeah. Goodwill toward all. Mm -hmm. And so this message is for all people, but I, I, it's no accident that it comes to the most marginalized members of the human family, a poor homeless couple for whom there was no room in the end. When we embrace those on the margins, we embrace God's vision for all of humanity. And isn't fear, Kim, Pastor Kim, isn't fear the underlying 
universal feeling that we all have yeah. and that's what drives so much of the insecurity and and some of the hate we're seeing and we're watching what's happening in Aleppo with these people and and what's even happening with the divisiveness in this country how do you talk to people um, to, to let them know that there's hope yeah well you know fear is paralyzing yeah. and so everywhere you look around the world you find fear fear I mean it can it can cripple you and it can make you feel like that is the biggest thing in front of you and what you have to realize and I tell people this all the time my message is just so simple my message is you know what you're here God's got you here. Romans says that he's working all things together for your good. And so you're here for a reason. And what can you do in your world? Where can you be in your world that will help other people find hope, be able to crawl out of their place, crawl out of their place of depression? Where are you in your life that you have something that can say, I've been there, I've done it, now let's do this together. If we all come together as a team. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the biggest obstacle well, you know, this year going into 2017? I do think it's it's fear, and I want to yeah. build on what uh, my brother and sister have said here. You know, what was that message of the angels? It yeah. was to the shepherds, don't be afraid. Come on. Don't be terrified. Yeah. Go and look and find this child, and the message of Christmas is be intensely curious yeah. about Jesus. Who is Jesus? What can he do for you? And then the angels said he's the Christ. The anointed one. Yeah. What does that mean? And it's okay to have doubt and it's okay to have questions, yeah. right? Yeah. Because yeah, some yeah, people, yeah, yeah. they well, beat themselves fact. up it's for human. that. It's yeah, human nature. Yeah, it is. It yeah. is. But that's the, the shepherds, I'm sure, they had their doubts. They were wondering what the heck just happened yeah. to us out here in the middle of this field. Yeah. All right? We're just on the job. Uh -huh. and, and God has done this incredible thing. But what did we really see? But they went. See, faith is not the opposite of fear. Faith is what you do with your fear. Come on. And this right. is what these guys did. They went and uh, and the Magi, they went and found Jesus. And I think that's the message yes, we want our it. people it's, to have. It's, it's, it's I love a it. message. Jesus. That's yeah. right. It's a message that resonates from Aleppo to Chicago. Mm -hmm. There's a reason yeah. why we're still here, because this story continues to resonate. And uh, God still shows up in the midst of that. It's not obvious, sort of away from the cameras, forgive me, away from the satellite trucks. God <laughs> yeah. is doing this yeah. great thing, shows up. Uh, in a barn. Yeah. God tiptoes down the back stairwell of human experience Man. and enters into our turmoil. Mm -hmm. And our job is to continue to spread that message. We yeah. thank you all so much thank for being here. For I'm sorry me. we're out of time, but you, I know you get to go and you get to get that message out even more this morning. So thank uh, you for taking time to be with us. Thank you. Thank you so for having us. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you as well.